I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Family, we are currently living in critical times and we must prepare for the arrival of the kingdom of Yah. Let's be watchmen of our Savior. You are now listening to Surviving the Last Days Podcast, a Bible-based podcast for kingdom preppers. Remnant of God, let's gather until that last trumpet sounds. Approximately, it is said to be reported that 8 billion, or the Census Bureau estimates the world population at 8 billion people in this entire world. Now, out of the 8 billion people, there are about 2.3 billion people that identify in the religion of Christianity. There are about 1.9 billion in, that identify as Islam as their religion. And then there are about 1.1 billion people that identify themselves as non religious, agnostic, atheist. And then there are about 1.1 billion people that identify as Hinduism. And the list goes on because there are, oh my God, so many different religions in the world. I mean, you're probably in a religion yourself that you known from birth or that somebody introduced to you or, um, you know, you you probably adopted a religion once you got older, you, you, you raised Christianity, then you turned to Buddhism or Hinduism, Um you know, you were raised Jehovah Witness, then you turned into Muslim or something like that. You know, people uh, choose religions and uh, as they get older, you know, and their belief systems change. And you're probably one of those ones whose belief system change. But I mention all that to say that there is only one true religion, right? In fact, there's a scripture that says, I can look it up for you. And all scripture is inspired by the most high God, Yahweh. So this scripture says, let me see here. I think the scripture says there's only one God, one faith, one baptism. Ooh, that's the Holy Spirit, because I don't know how I remember that. But I'm going to look up the scripture so I can tell y'all. Let's see. And I just to uh, put this information out there, it's estimated that there are over or there may be an estimate of 10,000 distinct religions worldwide. (laughs) Now, 10,000 different religions, really? (laughs) I mean, really. It literally says there are an an estimated 10,000 distinct religions worldwide. Some of them have, have a large following. Some of them have a small following. Some of them been around. Some religions been around for years. Some been around for a short period of time. And if we want to look up the definition of what is a religion, I can tell you it's actually separate from what is the Bible. 
a religion is a belief or belief system. And that's the simplest way I could put it. It's a belief system that displays some type of worship to a supernatural power. Some call it God. They don't even say which specific God because, you know, back in Bible times, they used to worship all type of gods. But but most of these religions don't even identify um, what type of religion or what type of God they're worshiping, you know. But religion basically is a belief system. Um, basically, I would say put together by man, by humans, you know, it, it, so it don't really align with the Bible. Like some religions practice Easter. We got Easter coming up. It doesn't align with the Bible. Uh, first of all, because the day they say in that Christ rose is wrong. And also the bunny and the egg don't really go along with Christ. It, it goes along with some other, uh, God, I think it's called Ishtar, the god of fertility. Um, you can look it up yourself and do your research if that matters to you. Some people don't, it don't matter. But I think it matters because if your religion and your religious practices don't align with the Bible, well, we got an issue here. Because now you're putting Christ in with worldly interests. And that's not really how it's supposed to go. Your worship is supposed to be clean to the most part you know if if you got knowledge to know that easter is pagan or easter is a is a part of the god of fertility then you should know that that's not really association with christ you know and some people might say well you know christ you know it doesn't matter at least we're we're trying to observe his resurrection. Well, I mean, who told you to do that in the first place? Because Christ said, do this in remembrance of me when he broke the bread and poured out the wine with the apostles. And he was talking about in remembrance of his death. He didn't say in remembrance of his resurrection. Matter of fact, when he was resurrected from the garden tomb and he appeared to the first person, I think it was Mary Magdalene, they said, uh, he never came around them to say, do, do you remember my resurrection? He was resurrected. They seen him. That was a testimony. But on the night before he died, when he broke bread with him, he became the lamb for the Passover meal, the lamb of God. And he told them do this in remembrance of me until my return. And that was to remember the day he poured out his body, the bread and poured out his blood, the wine. So he never said celebrate resurrection. You know what I'm saying? But I, I y'all wrong. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Uh, but, but basically let me get back to this scripture. Cause I think I'm going to title this podcast episode that, uh, one, what does it say? The scripture says there's only one baptism. Let's look it up. And you guys can look it up too. If you can take notes, if you have time to write this scripture down and look it up. Maybe it says one baptism. Um, one baptism. One faith. It is. It might says one God too. Uh saying Ephesians four. Ephesians chapter four, verse five and six. We'll we'll look it up to make sure because I do have the King James version on my phone. I like to go back to the King James version because they have so many different translations, honey. Um. And I feel like the King James Version is the closest to the right interpretation. 
So we'll look it up there first, and then we'll look at the other translations. I'll read the King James Version, though, for y'all, so I can, you know, try to... Okay, Ephesians 4, verse 5. Okay, so... Okay, so it says... What what does the translation say that I have here? Because my King James... Okay. Okay, ver- chapter 4, verse 5 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, who is above all. Hold on. My phone kind of went black there. <laughs> Who one God and one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Okay, so that's the King James Version. Then there's, yeah, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in and, and you all. Now, <clears throat> if you get the original Bible, like a Hebrew Bible or something, they'll say the name probably. They they won't list as titles. You know, they'll probably say the name. I want to do, I have, I don't think I have that Hebrew Bible on my phone. I don't, I got to look it up on Google Play and see if they have a, a Hebrew Bible app because it'll tell you, because Lord is a title, right? God is a title. Um, and It'll say the name, you know, but you, you guys got to know that the, the name of God and the name of our Messiah has been taken out of the Bible. You can make your own assumptions of why they would do something like that. Um, but let me look up another translation here just so we can be really anointed by this scripture with clear understanding Oh, man, let's see here. Praise God. Let's see if we can get to... Okay. Can we say thank God for good health right now while I'm looking at this scripture? Just just take a moment right now and say, thank you, Father God, for decent health. Thank you, God, I'm not in the hospital bed. Thank you, God, I'm not in the prison. Thank you, God, I got clothes on my back. Thank you, God, I'm, I'm in warm... I'm in warm transportation. You know, can we be thankful for the things that we overlook on a daily basis? All praises to the Most High God of Israel. All right, let's see here. Because we want to get some Bible truths. We just want one more translation. That's how I like when I study. I like to look up multiple translations. It is so cold here in the Midwest. I'm like, I thought we were approaching spring or I don't even know, are we in spring? But I thought we were approaching spring and it is cold like winter now. I'm like, no, 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 I don't like this. Oh, my phone is moving quite slow. I mean, my computer, I was on the computer, guys. But um, I don't want to hold anybody up. So let me look at another on my other device. I don't know why this run is so slow. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can look it up on another device. And I know everybody likes talking about the resurrection of Christ. It is a monumental moment, you know, where somebody died. You see them die. You see them get brutally beaten and humiliated and he even stabbed on the stake. He was stabbed. His blood. He's he was pierced, and his blood gushed out. Um, Messiah's blood gushed out. So you saw that. You saw him die. He gave up the ghost on the tree, right? And then what? He rose. He's no longer in the tomb. He's gone. What do you mean he's gone? The Messiah said, "You can tear down his temple, and it will." be built back up in three days he was talking about his body 
And that's exactly what happened. He swallowed death up. He he is the first example of everlasting life. I mean, he had to die to receive it so that we can receive the everlasting life gift. You know, and he rose. He ain't no liar. The Messiah is very real. There are all type of physical, tangible, scientific evidence that this man walked around and not just as a prophet there's scientific evidence on prophet on the prophets as well you know the dead sea scrolls and all that um but this archaeological evidence scientific evidence on the messiah proves that he was more than a man more than a he, he wasn't a prophet because prophets didn't die for us amen prophet he prophesied and told us foretold us what things will happen but he was not a prophet he was sent by god divinely to make a sacrifice by giving up his blood you know uh giving up his body pouring out his blood and making atonement for our sins so that we don't have to do animal sacrifices no more to ask for forgiveness from our father in heaven we can just say ask for forgiveness in the name of yeshua hamishiach the anointed one Again, let's go to Ephesians. So I'm looking at a different Bible here. And we're going to see. And Ephesians is in the New Testament. So we're going to see what this verse is. And I love watching this series, Chosen God. Some people say it's blasphemy. I used to think so, but I get what I can out of it. I get the truth. I I, I take the meat and spit out the bones, you know, and uh, I, I, I like it at this point. Man, Christ is so real, guys. He's so real. Um, but, yeah, I think I'm going to title this episode One messiah one faith one baptism and one yahweh of us all father of us all right now this is an audio bible it can actually talk for us and let's see what it says this is, well, we can go ahead and play the audio i don't know if y'all gonna be able to hear it though Let's see if it'll come on. All right, let's play. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Now, undeserved kindness was given to each one of us. All right. To- so that scripture, write it down. It's in Ephesians chapter four, verses five through six. Now, I mentioned in the beginning of the show that there are 8 billion people on earth, about 2 billion identified in Christianity. Um, there are over 10,000 distinct religions. And, but the scriptures, which, which we need to go by as Christ followers, because the scriptures, you have to have faith in them and know that they're truthful. And that all scripture is inspired by the most high God, Yahweh. So Yahweh inspired the writer to say, all right, that there is only one Lord, one Messiah, one faith. That means one belief system or one set of laws, statutes and commandments by one God. So there is only one faith. There's only one baptism. That sounds like you don't have to get baptized over and over again in different religions. Like you go to, you know how most churches say, well, 
you got to get baptized with our church and our brand because we're we're church of god in christ i'm just using y'all for an example no i'm not picking on nobody but Hey, you you came from Pentecostal, great, but we're Church of God in Christ. You got to get baptized in our particular church name. But that's not what this scripture is saying. This scripture said there's only one baptism. You can go out to the Jordan River and get baptized and go to any church you want to, and you, you, you've you already been baptized. Now, that's what my understanding of the scripture is. And it says that in verse 6, it goes on to say, one God, one Yahweh. One Adonai, one El Shaddai, one Elohim, whatever you call them, one Allah, and Father of all. That one God is Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. So, why do we have 10,000 distinct religions? Why do we have 10,000 distinct religions in the world? Have you ever asked yourself that? I mean, I know you like your church. You like the choir. You like the singing. You like the, the, the band playing. You like the members. But if we can put all that aesthetics of church to the side and get to the real nitty gritty, why are there 10,000 distinct religions? Why do your church practice or observe the resurrection when Christ said to observe his memorial because he rose didn't do anything for us but his death was definitely significant for us because we needed that blood and we needed his body to make atonement for our sins why is your church planting eggs again or why are you painting eggs? I mean, it's nice to paint eggs. The colors are beautiful. Do rabbits even lay eggs? I mean, come on, y'all. We got to ask these questions. You you know you know how people that smoke weed ask questions. How come they can ask questions and you Christ followers or churchgoers or mainstream Christianity believers can't ask questions? I just want to know. No judgment. I just want to know. Have you thought about this? Does rabbits even lay eggs? Um, No, they don't scientifically. But yet you're practicing this. You're going to make some cute little bunnies and you're going to paint some nice little eggs and your church is going to do a whole big thing about Easter. Ishtar. Matter of fact, the fertility god. Um... <laughs> Why are there 10,000 distinct religions? That's probably not even a true number because now we're in 2024 and people making their own religion. You got people got the church of Beyonce. I know y'all heard of that. The church of Beyonce, for real, for real, y'all. So it's probably more than 10,000 distinct religions worldwide, but that report says... 10,000. So I'm just going to go with 10,000. But why? When the scripture blatantly, clearly says there is only one Lord, one Messiah. There is only one faith. So there's only one belief. We shouldn't have Catholic. We shouldn't have baptism. We shouldn't have Baptist. We shouldn't have Church of God in Christ. We shouldn't have Pentecostal. We shouldn't have Presbyterian. We shouldn't have Orthodox Jew. We should not have Islam. We should not have uh, what other religions are there? The Church of Beyonce, like I said, we shouldn't have Scientology. We shouldn't have Jehovah Witness. If there's only one faith, shouldn't we all be one band, one sound under the kingdom, one nation under God? As they used to have the kids recite in school to the flag, one nation under God, shouldn't we all be one nation under the God under God's kingdom? I want to let you know something, folks. If you pray the model prayer, or if you include some of the model prayer, in your prayer life, 
and you're praying for God's kingdom to come and you're just giving up praise and you're saying almighty Yahweh, you know, or almighty God, I pray that your kingdom come, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know what you're praying for? You're praying for one worldwide government ruled by the King Yeshua or King Jesus, as you guys like to say. The Messiah, you're praying for one world government. That means you're praying to lose your Kojic church. You're praying to lose your Jehovah Witness organization. You're praying, you're praying to lose your Islamic beliefs because you're praying for one kingdom. As the scripture wants you to pray for, as the Messiah instructed the apostles to pray. But I just want you to know what it means. Like when you pray for God's kingdom to come, you're praying for it to leave that that brand alone, that religion brand alone, because we're all going to be one nation under God. That And God, last time I checked in the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Apocrypha, he wasn't Baptist. <laughs> the Baptist religion was uh, formulated around 1800s. He wasn't Jehovah Witness. That ain't nowhere near in the Bible that God or the Messiah was Jehovah Witness. And he wasn't, I mean, there were Pharisees, there were Sadducees, but he honestly didn't identify as Jewish. Because that means he's like a Jew. He didn't have to identify as a Jew. He was a Jew by blood. So he didn't have to say, I'm Jewish. He just said, I'm Jew. I'm from the tribe of Judah. Amen. So we only have by scripture one Lord, Yeshua, our Messiah, one faith. And and maybe maybe you guys are saying, hey, that's not what that scripture means. Maybe faith means something else. Well, what does one mean? Because we all can count. Now, the public school system ain't that great, but they did teach me how to count to 10. And I know what one means. Do you know what one means? That means by itself, alone. One is the loneliest number, the song says. One is the loneliest number. Okay, we don't have to, do we really have to argue about what one means? Because y'all know how y'all like to change words and stuff. Y'all like to change the meaning of certain words. Now, I don't think we can change the meaning of one. I think one is one. <laughs> Until there comes to be a time when one equals two, let me know. Because I'm going to take my, chill, my child out of, out of public school. Just let me know. Okay. Thank God I only got one. I ain't got no more going through that doctrination system. But just let me know when one becomes two. Okay. Because as far as I know, it means one uno. Okay. By alone, by itself. So the scripture is saying one faith. But hey, what is faith? Let's talk about what the definition of faith is. Because y'all might say, well, faith, they don't mean, it don't mean like faith, like, like, they, you know, you know, the devil is all the confusion. He likes to change people, people, grammar and definitions and stuff. So let me um, go ahead and give y'all the benefit of doubt and look up the definition of faith. Um. Okay, it says complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Strong belief in God. All right, so the Bible, now the Bible says one faith. Now the biblical definition of faith, I think it could mean the same thing as this Google Google definition. It could mean to believe, right? Because Christ always talked about having faith without doubt and faith without works is dead. So if you believe something, you put in the work and living your life like you believe in that something. So that is faith. I will say that. But Ephesians chapter four, verses five and six is saying there's only one faith. So if we all have one belief, we all believe in one God, then why do we have 10,000 distinct religions? That's back to that question. And if we all believe in the same God, then why does that God in Islam, Allah, believe that Yeshua, the Messiah, was just a prophet? And why does that God at the Jehovah Witness organization 
believed that his name, God's name was Jehovah. Maybe you don't care about God's name. Okay, fine. Why does that God at Jehovah Witness organization don't celebrate the resurrection? Why does that God at Islam don't even celebrate, observe the Messiah as a, as the Messiah? They think he's a prophet. Uh, they, if I may be wrong, but that's what I've I've observed them saying that he was a prophet. Then they actually look at Muhammad as someone to follow. They always say, I am a follower of the Elijah Muhammad, something like that they say. So why does that God over there follow Elijah Muhammad? Why does the God in the Catholic organization believe that you confess your sins to a priest, a man, human priest? Why does the God in the Kojic religion believe in Christmas believes in Easter. Why does the Catholic God says that Sunday is a Sabbath and then Jehovah Witness follow that and Baptists follow that and Presbyterian follow that and most mainstream Christianity churches go ahead and say, yeah, Sunday is the Sabbath. Even when the Bible says that the Sabbath is Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. Why do all these different religions that say we all worship in the same God, we all believe in the same God, we all believe in the same Messiah? Why are they? Why are there so many then? Why are there so many? Ten, why are there ten thousand distinct religions worldwide? Why does the Hindu guy look like a fat black Buddha man? I mean, I don't know. He looked like a. Have y'all seen that? Am I talking about the Hindu? Okay, no, it's the Buddhism guy. Why does the Buddhism guy? Look like a flat, black, bald Chinese man. I don't know. It's just giving, it's giving very much, somebody made this up. It's giving very, I'm I'm not trying to be disrespectful to nobody's belief system. But I think that ultimately, the Bible is where we have to go. And I think that God is the true source, Yahweh, the true eternal God, eternal living God, the God that sees and hears Because, you know, some of these guys can't see and hear. You know, the prophet Elisha, was that the prophet Elijah that was being condescending to some people and um, kind of telling them, why can't your God hear? Why can't your God see? Was that the prophet Elijah or Elijah? Yeah, Elisha. I'll look it up. (laughs) <laughs> I remember that scripture. It was kind of funny. He was being condescending. And you can take note at this scripture too. Uh, oh, yeah, it was mocking. I said he was being condescending, but he was mocking. So according to 1 Kings chapter 8, uh, let's see, verse 27, 29. Chapter 18, verse 27, 29. Um, Let's see here. We'll let the audio read it for us. And then I'll read it too. About noon, Elijah began to mock them and say, Call out at the top of your voice. After all, he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought. Or he has gone to relieve himself. (laughs) Or maybe he is asleep. And someone needs to wake him up. They were calling out at the top of their voice and cutting themselves with daggers and lances according to their custom until their blood gushed out all over them. Noon and was so they, they, that and was they, their custom, and and Elijah, probably Elijah, just mocking them, you know, like yeah, maybe he went to the bathroom to relieve himself because your God that you worship can't do anything, he can't hear, he can't see, because there's only one God that can do that, and he doesn't look like a 
fat black bald Buddha man. God is a spirit. That's what the scripture says. You can look up that scripture too. God is a spirit. Why does why does that religion over there says that God is all three people? That he's that him and his son is one and the same, the Trinity, that doctrine. But that other religion over there says, no, there's no such thing as a Trinity doctrine. That's false. What does the Bible say, guys? That's where you need to get your faith from, the Bible, because these religions are going to indoctrinate you with whatever they want to. And you got to use your common sense and your brain as well sometimes. I mean, that Trinity doctrine, it's not supported by the Bible. God is a spirit. Yeshua was a man that walked the earth, but he wasn't like any other man. He was a distinct human being. In fact, there is scientific evidence. Some believe it, some don't believe it. Some believe in immaculate conception. Some people, some religions don't believe in immaculate conception. They think that, oh, the woman has to lay down with a man, not when it comes to God. God don't follow scientific rules. He is the author of the scientific rules. Praise God. Hey, man, he don't follow the rules because he makes up the rules. You hear me? So, no, scientifically, he wasn't like any other man. He only had 23 chromosomes from his mom. The Y chromosome came from a higher source. Y'all like to call it the universe. I say the most high God, Yahweh, the God that I am, that I am. Mm-hmm. Check this out. There's a video. I like that that scripture I shared too. You got to write that down. First Kings chapter 18, verse 27 through 28, where Elijah's mocking these people who have different gods and they're not the gods aren't doing anything. But when Elijah calls on his God, praise God. When Elijah calls on his God, fire comes down. Yes, indeed. You got to read that story in Kings. Um, when they try to call on their God to do something, didn't do anything. And, um, but, but check this out, moving along. If you ever get a chance, read first Kings chapter 18, um, moving along. Yes. Christ was not like any other man, but he did walk the earth. And it, and it is never said in scripture that God took on human form. It never said that. It said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. It didn't say the word was God. Did it? Let's look and see. Let's look and see. Y'all got to double check. Because some people, they they say they have a belief system that God took on human form. Um, and but how could he take on human form? Yet Yeshua was praying to him. Yet Yeshua was praying to God of he- in heaven when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, saying, "If if if you can take this cup from me that I'm about to approach." do so if it's in your will what are you praying to itself if he down here what are you praying to up there so y'all gotta use y'all common sense okay so in in yeah it it does say in the beginning was the word and people believe the word meant christ in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and Christ has often said that when you see my father, you see me. But I don't think that means that, oh, I'm saying that we're one and the same. Because why would you go to the Garden of Gethsemane during the time when you're about to get crucified to pray to your father in heaven? If you are the father that has came down from heaven, you're not longer, <laughs> no longer up there. So you're praying to. So, yeah, we got to be real now. We got to be real but check this out. There's a video. Now, there's an archaeologist. Some call him a nurse anesthesiologist. Some call him an archaeologist. 
His name is Ron Wyatt. And in, uh, in, in uh, 1982, he claimed, he made the claim that he found some dried residue blood in the, I guess, the place of the garden tomb where Yeshua was buried. And But, you know, he rose, so he's not there anymore. But his tomb, that garden tomb, is still there in Jerusalem. And from from the location where Christ was crucified um, on Calvary when he was pierced in his side as the prophet, the prophet told that he would be um, his blood gushed down and it is said that his blood dripped down to the tomb where he would be buried um, that's where they buried him eventually in that tomb and so this archaeologist goes over there and he's excavating and he found some dry residue blood i think he originally was looking for the ark of the covenant but he found some dry residue blood and he took it to a lab he just thought to take it to a lab and do some procedures and get the people to do some procedures on it um and they go, this video, this audio goes into detail about what is dry blood and what is, you know, dead blood. And he wanted to see what he can find out about the blood. He just took the blood, out, I mean, see if they can trace it back to something. Because, you know, our science is very intelligent and we can trace back mummies and e- people of Egypt, you know, and they can tell the the blood is alive or dead and chromosomes in the blood and um some people don't believe that ron in 1982 found the blood of our messiah um i think god i think the messiah is very real i think yahweh our god is very real so i definitely think that why wouldn't god leave some evidence like he left the Dead Sea Scrolls. Why wouldn't he leave evidence here and there um, where science can find to increase our faith? You know, you have naysayers who say, oh, that's impossible. That's not how it works. But you you got these people that are naysayers that they are not, they haven't went to school for chemistry. They don't have a bachelor's degree in chemistry. They don't have a master's degree in chemistry. They don't have a PhD in chemistry. They don't have a master's degree in lab technology, but they are telling you, oh, this uh, this uh, claim is not right. Well, you don't even have the credentials to say that it's not right. You Do you have a background in chemistry? Have you even taken a chemistry class, a biology class, a physiology class, something dealing with hematology, blood? Because if you have not taken any of those classes, you cannot fix your mouth to say, no, oh, that, that, that's not true. Because what, why is not true? Where's your hematology, hematology education telling you? If you don't have that, you don't need to speak against what this man has found. But you listen to the audio I'm going to play, and you determine what's. I mean, that's the whole point of faith, right? Faith is how do you define faith in a book of Hebrew? Do I got to look up that scripture too? Faith is the substance. What is this? Some people, this is their favorite scripture. Hebrews 11. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, th- the evidence of things not seen. So you, that's, that's how you explain faith. I mean, sometimes you're not going to have all the logical answers of why this is that but that's the whole point you believe that god is real you believe that the messiah is real you believe that the scripture said what the scripture says that he was pierced so why don't you believe that residue of blood can be found and be tested they test blood every day dead people blood and alive people blood why they can't find the blood of christ why that blood can't you know what I'm saying? Just be just be mindful of what you're listening to. Listen carefully to this video. I'm about to play it now, guys. I'm stop talking because I know I'm just running my mouth. 
All right. Sometimes that's that the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Once again, scientists are finding out that the truths of Scripture are far more literal than they ever imagined. One evening, millionaire Wyatt asked me to take a look at some material from a burial cave to see if these tiny particles were present. Without my knowledge, one of the samples was actually the blood sample that Ron had taken from the Ark of the Covenant dig. Okay, we're going to take the sample and uh, mix it with some sterile water. And test tube there that we've. The sample was placed under the microscope. And as the specimen began to come into focus, thousands of tiny particles, summatids if you will, became plainly visible. At that time, Maynell, who was standing behind me, began to weep. As I turned around and saw the expression on her face, I realized immediately that the sample we were looking at was actually the sample that Ron had found to be the blood of Christ. Dry blood is dead blood. Knows that, all right? They can test the blood of the pharaohs, the mummies of the pharaohs, all right? There's certain things they can do. They cannot get a chromosome count by any method I'm familiar with, all right? Things keep changing. I don't profess to know everything. However, there's no way I know that you can get a chromosome count out of dead blood. You can get a DNA and some other things, but not a chromosome count, all right? That's done by living white blood cells. Now then, first of all, in this analysis, I took the blood into a laboratory in Israel, and I asked one of the people I work with in, in antiquities, where is a good laboratory that does reliable work? And they said, such and such, such and such. I took it. I just said, please examine this blood and tell me what you can tell me about it. All right? They said, well, look, we're going to reconstitute it. We're going to put it in normal saline and keep it at body temperature for 72 hours with uh, gentle swirling. All right? That's their business. That's great. I said, now, I want to be there when you check it out. They said, fine. So I was back. They checked it out. I said, now, uh, they said it's human blood. We can tell that. They did whatever tests they need to do. And then I said, take some of the white blood cells and put them in a growth medium. And body temperature for 48 hours and they said well that'll do no good because it's dead blood i said would you please do that for me and they said okay we'll do it so anyway i said i want to be there when you take it out and examine it so i was back there they took it out they examined it under a microscope and the one technician called the other one over there and then they called the boss over there and they were talking Hebrew a mile a minute there for a little bit and they looked at me and they said Mr. Wyatt this human blood only has 24 chromosomes in it everybody else has 46 you see 23 from your mother 23 from your father 22 autosomes from your mother 22 autosomes from your father you get an X from your mother you may get an X or a Y from your father alright this blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side, one Y chromosome only. You see, the China child could not have developed if they hadn't had the autosomes from the mother. So all of his physical characteristics were determined by his mother's side of the family, her autosomes. His maleness was determined by this one Y that came from a source, not a human male. Then they said, this blood is alive. And then they said, his blood is this. I said, it's the blood of your Messiah. I assure you those 
Testament's wires have changed. Later, one wire would confirm that this was the Ark of the Covenant, and that the blood on the mercy seat was from someone who had only one human parent. There were no paternal chromosomes except for one Y chromosome. Jesus was God's only begotten son, just as he said he was. Christ's blood would be sprinkled. So, the blood of Jesus is still alive with scientific proof that he is our king. He's our Messiah. He's alive. He rose. That's why y'all celebrating resurrection, right? Y'all celebrating Easter because he rose. So, that means his blood is still alive. So, this dry blood that this archaeologist, nurse anesthesiologist, whatever y'all want to call him, Ron Wyatt, he found it. He was looking for the Ark and the Covenant, guys. That's what his original dig purpose was. He was supposed to dig up the ground for the Ark of the Covenant. Instead, while he was in the garden tomb where Christ was laid to rest after being crucified and taken down from the tree, um, he found dried residue blood instead of the Ark of the Covenant. Um, Whoever touched the Ark of the Covenant, by the way, is possibly going to die because I think in scripture only the Levites are supposed to carry it. So I'm not sure why people go looking for that, but I don't know. But what is that? I think the only thing that's in the Ark of the Covenant is the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, um, the Ten Commandments, uh, the Holy Grail. You can look it up, but um, that's what he originally wanted to look for. But instead he found dried blood and what the audio was saying was ron wyatt the archaeologist he took the blood to a lab over there in israel and this was in 1982 so this was before i was born and i guess it you know lab science was advanced enough to be able to they had already tested dead, dead people's blood and and had procedures they used to um you know, be able to get results from it, like DNA. Like he said, you you can get a lot of things from dead blood, but you can't get really chromosomes, he was saying. Um, but he took this dry blood that he found in a garden tomb where Yeshua was laid to rest at one point, and he took it in dry. And, I, and they said, you know, this is the lab. People told him, this is dead blood, this is dry blood. You ain't going to be able to get much information out of might get some things you know but when they tested it they found that this human blood had 23 chromosomes from the mother's side but no but it was missing 23 chromosomes from the father's side it only had you know you get an x from your mother but it only the blood only had a Y. His male characteristics came from that Y, only one Y. So he only had 23 chromosomes. A normal person has 43, has 46 chromosomes. 23 from your mother, 23 from your father. But he had one Y chromosome from a source that was not human. That source, guys, was the Holy Spirit. Because I myself do believe in what the scriptures say, that Mary was a virgin and did not lay with Joseph. And she became with child when the angel told her that you're going to be pregnant. And she's like, how when I have not known a man? The scripture told that. I believe in the scriptures. As a Christ follower, I believe that you, you're you required to believe in the scriptures. So you can't just come into your mind and, and think about what you do to ba make a baby and think that that's what God has to do. Because God don't have to get a woman to lay down with no man to make no baby. He can make a baby for the Holy Spirit. Amen. So he Mary became for a child. And that lab said that his Y characteristics his male characteristics came from that Y chromosome that was 
delivered by a source not human. They said, the man said at the end as he began to tear up, they said, this blood is alive. They said this 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 person that developed only had twenty three chromosomes. That's that's weird. And they said, whose blood is this? Amen. Whose blood is this? And he said, this is the blood of your Messiah. And he said he believed those men's lives were changed forever. And I don't even know if you can. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, here I come. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't even know if um I'm sorry guys, I'm having a discrepancy. Um, you know the devil know how to interrupt you when you're trying to do something good. But um yeah. So I gotta hurry up and end this guys, but it was so nice talking to you. And I would have liked to go longer, but I got to go get an oil change on my car, guys. So I will be back. But I will post this video on Facebook at hashtag surviving the last days podcast page. Or surviving the last days ministry hashtag. Um, so you guys can view it. But the blood of Jesus is still alive. Christ is still real. And why do we have 10,000 distinct religions? I don't know. Because scripture says in Ephesians, there is only one Lord, one Messiah. There's only one God, Yahweh. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. Choose this day whom you shall serve. Amen. I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. I have told you these things. So that in me, you may have peace. In this world, 